Hi, Hi everyone. everyone. Welcome to season one, episode one of Show the World Your Garden. In this series, we're going to be traveling to gardens all over the world and bringing you along with us. This is going to be really cool because you never know where we're going to show up. For this first episode, we're en route to Costa Mesa, California to visit Liz and her two small children. They're growing a ton of vegetables in her small backyard. So join us and Liz and her children as she shows the world her garden. I'm so excited to see Liz's garden, I've seen on Instagram for all this time, and now I actually get to see it in person. Hi, Liz. How are hi. you? Hi, Ken. Good to see you. Welcome. Thank you so so much for having us. Yes. I'm so excited to be here. Thank you, and thank you, Jerry, for also coming down here and capturing this moment. Yeah. So I'm so so thrilled that you guys can both make it. Oh, thank yes. you. I'm so excited to see your garden. We'll look around in just a moment. But first of all, I want to hear like, how did you get into gardening? Why did you start? So I started probably as a little girl. Um, I remember getting nasturtium seeds from my dad. At, long time ago and those are kind of like the bigger seeds so really easy yeah. for kids to carry and plant and it was so easy but we never had a big plot of garden to grow from and then I had my own son about seven years ago and then as you start looking at baby food and introducing what to prepare I realized it was actually easy to do it myself so I started to grow my own vegetables because organic was very important for me to introduce to his diet and then butternut squash start coming into the diet. We have an avocado tree, so we can easily mash that up. And then it just exploded into containers everywhere, <laughs> little beds everywhere, adding more flowers. Now I have a little girl, so we're all trying to garden together as a family and eat more healthy. And it's a really good hobby and exercise too, so we love it. And I know your kids love gardening, and I cannot wait to meet them. Yeah. Can you bring them out so we yeah, can Yeah, we'll go get them. They're yeah. ready. Okay. Ollie, Vivi. Callie Kim here. Ooh. I hear footsteps. I hear that you both are quite the little gardeners. You like to yeah. garden, Ollie? Yeah. I've seen you harvesting out here with your Tonka truck, filling yeah. up your Tonka truck and then putting it back in the house and having your mom cook it and everything. So I can't wait to see your garden. You guys want to show us around? You want to do the tour, you guys? Yeah, you okay, want to go pick some veggies? Good. I can't wait. Great to meet you guys. So Liz, before we walk around and harvest, just give me kind of a general overview of your garden. Yes, definitely. So can't miss it. There's a pool, which is something that we absolutely love, but definitely poses a challenge as to where I can put containers or what I can grow based upon sunlight and shade. I do have a lot of containers, especially of the smart pots, which is fantastic because I can move them around from nice. sun to shade if something's getting a little too beat up by the sun. Vivi, Ollie, where are the butternut squash and spaghetti squash located? Uh, let's go get them. Right let's go get them. Okay. I like to play this fun game where I ask them where certain flowers or veggies are so they become familiar with what it actually looks like rather than the finished product when they're eating. This one is butternut. So this is actually one of the first foods that you guys had when you were babies as a puree. Those are some and nice then, looking squash Vivi and Ollie, can you hold this? It's super heavy. Yeah, I can hold it by okay. myself. Okay, so we have some spaghetti, spaghetti squash. So here's one. Those come off real easily. Yes. Nice brown stem there, huh, to harvest Two. Them. Containers right outside your door, like nice access. When you're cooking, you can just pop out here. Exactly. And grab vegetables and this basil, oh my gosh. Yeah, so this is the large leaf basil, wow. which is from, I think from a couple of your seed collections. So this actually has really grown very well in this hot weather. So, wow. and it smells so good. So I don't I'm, think I've ever seen leaves that large before on that yeah. basil. So oh, it really so likes those smart pots. It's a great spot it for does. it. It does. And I have a little squash that's growing next to it as a little companion neighbor. So that's working out really well. Nice. And I think Sounds we have good. a little yellow summer squash over here. You guys want to pick that with me? Big smart pot. This one right here. Ooh, yeah. Nice. You want to twist it off? Yeah. And I'll get your basket Perfect. for you. It's a nice little size for you guys. Vivi, you want to help him um, pull there that one go, off? There you go, Vivi. You just gotta twist it. Twist it a little bit. There we go. Good nice. Job. So we got a lot of things on rollers too. So as we were saying, like we like to chase the sun. Uh -huh. So I can kind of give some things more sun as it needs it throughout the day. And then just for easy access to like cleaning out the patio, it's easy to roll them in and out of the way. So I'm half Korean. And so I'm trying to grow more things that are unique to my heritage. Oh, nice. So I don't know the Korean name because I'll butcher it, but this is, the <laughs> nickname is, it's an avocado squash. Oh wow. And then you can kind of see the way that it looks is why it's given its nickname. That's beautiful. Yeah. So these are delicious, just sliced up and grilled just like any other zucchini okay. or squash. I love the, the shape. Yes. It's so it's unusual. So pretty. So 
So these are mokum carrots. Ah. Ooh. Oh. Oh. That's a good carrot. Nice I found one. That one. We love to do stir fry, so we have some delicious shishito peppers that are over here. And these are actually from last year. So we can have peppers as a perennial here in Southern California. Mm -hmm. And they're so easy. And the more you pick them, the more they grow. All right. We have a big squirrel problem around here. Oh, and man. This little fence behind us is kind of that highway of where they go from house to house. And we have some Japanese cucumbers that are growing. And I've only gotten a few so far because they've been helping themselves. That one right there. Can you open it up? Yeah, I saw it. Good idea. Clamshells. Whoa. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah. It's like, I almost got stabbed by this. Okay. So oh, that's beautiful a really nice Japanese looking. cucumber. So we'll be having that in a salad tonight, most likely. So this is also another Korean vegetable, and this is called a cucumber hot pepper. And it's actually on the milder side. And it gets its name because once it gets grows longer, it does resemble a small cucumber. Nice. But these are delicious and the way I like to do my hot dogs is I'll put chopped tomatoes and some of these peppers just diced up and it oh, gives it yummy. yeah a really nice refreshing crunch and texture and it's healthy. Now can you share with us what is your favorite part? What are you the most proud of in your garden? It's absolutely gorgeous. Well thank you. I'd love to hear more about that. Thank you. Um, I would say what I'm most proud of is just most of the things that I grow are from seed and I think it's just the challenge that it comes from having to nourish something and watching and see what it needs to help it thrive and to get a nice bounty of harvest afterwards. So that's always kind of like a proud moment. I love your Instagram, it's Liz the Garden Gnome, right? Uh, at Liz, Liz in the Gnome. Okay, Liz yeah. in the Gnome. Yeah. And I love how you give lots of garden tips and also some cooking tips too. Yes. So you guys got to follow her on Instagram because she Thank really shows beautiful pictures, really cute videos of your kids too out here picking and harvesting. Yes. And some great recipes as well. Yes. So I always tell my husband, like, I grow it, he cooks it. So <laughs> there you go. I give him credit for what you might see as the finished product in those pictures. So this is a really big smart pot bag and a cherry tomato. And you can see that is actually flourishing very well here. Nice. Yeah. I noticed you've got drip. Do you have drip throughout your whole garden here? How do you water? Um, yeah, so we do about 50% drip. So anything that's along the perimeter of the pool, we'll have it on the drip irrigation. And then everything else will just be hand watering, which is also good for me to come out and inspect to see if there's any diseases, any pests on there. I just can't believe how much Liz does on floored in a smaller area here. It's amazing. Oh yeah. my gosh, look at that. That's beautiful. Rich compost. Yeah, so this is the first phase of it. So we always put the new product in here. So right here, you just kind of lift it out and then everything will just fall directly down. And then on the bottom is where I can extract the finished product and then use that as a mulch and just kind of like a boost for some of the plants throughout the season. Garden gold right here, black gold. All right, load them up. Those veggie baskets are getting heavy. Trucks are a good way to bring them into the house, huh, Holly? And my favorite spot is just kind of in this section right here. So I started out growing more vegetables because I think as a gardener, you think you want to grow food and you want to sustain your family. But in the end, I realized I needed to do more to encourage those blossoms to be pollinated. So I started growing more flowers and I started becoming more addicted to getting seeds that are for flowers and for the pollinators in my area. I work a long day and then just to have this little respite in nature is really rewarding just to break away from the Zoom meetings, the sitting behind your computer and actually have a window that's out here in the air is just really, really wonderful. Now, if you were to say something to a new gardener, because you really have done a lot in a small space, someone just starting out, what would you say? I would say what you always say, start simple, expand later, grow what you like to eat, explore different cuisines, grow something that's native to your heritage, and just grow something fun and get your kids involved and do what you like to do and do it more. As you start to develop those skills, you'll figure things out real quickly, what works and what doesn't work that and one last question is gardening with kids one tip for getting your kids to eat vegetables or getting them out in the garden I would have them be part of the beginning and end stage so have them start by planting that seed and then have them be at that moment where they harvest that pea or that carrot so that way they can remember from where it began to where it ended 
and then document it in pictures and videos. So that way Fine. you can share that with them later. <laughs> you did eat your vegetables. Oh, I, love that. Yeah. I wanted to bring you something so you can grow more of your own vegetables. What? <laughs> wow. Mom might have to open it and help you figure out what it is. And these are nice and um, long. They're three Hold feet. It. They're called Little Shorty. So they're perfect for, for kids to grow in or for you to Ooh. pop up like wherever you oh, have nice. a little bit of space. So thank you so much for being on the video today. Comment below. We plan on doing more Show the World Your Garden videos. You never know where we might be next. And thanks so much for watching. See you on the next video. Bye. Bye.